When Jonas and I started over on our own, or started for real, we spent most of our days lurking around the floors of this building downtown owned by a cultural circle called Studie Fremjandet. It was a place where bands that didn't own any gear, like ourselves, could share rehearsal rooms already equipped with provided backline. If there were any vacant rooms, or some band being late to any of the rooms, we sneaked in at first chance. The downside of this rehearsal complex was the schedule allocated to each band. You were only given a 3 hour practice pass one time per week. A ridiculously small portion for two hungry teenagers happily skipping school and replacing studies with a jam. We would sometimes lock the door from the inside and play so loud pretending we didn't hear the next band come knocking and we acted like we had forgotten the time. The bass player in the band after us turned out to be a cop, but not even that would stop us. Eventually they installed a decibel detector in our room, which would cut off all electricity, so the room went both silent and pitch black at the same time. I remember one of us then found out you could open up one of the roof panels, so we placed the detector up inside the isolation padding. We later found out one of the employees had got burn wounds after having tried to take down an apparently very overheated detector. Oops. Very few gigs this year, mainly because we have started to write music again, but we played at a festival in Greece that I remember quite well. Not only because we played at noon in the hottest sun ever, Daniel could hardly touch his cymbals while performing, but also because Dio played, and it happened to be Ronnie James Dio's birthday. After our gig we started to drink heavily backstage along with the guys from Dismember. Anders and Daniel had a fight, I can't remember why though, but it was quite fun. Anyway, after some hours of drinking we realized that the backstage area has been rebuilt without us noticing it, and now it has got long tables, full of champagne glasses, belly dancers performing, a lot of people celebrating. We celebrate this by putting down our heads in a big barrel full of beer, ice and cold water. Then we headbang with our soaking wet hair. This is where the now infamous refreshment invention, ice banging, was born. But the guards at Dio's birthday party didn't like what we were doing, so we were told to either stop or leave the backstage area. By then we realized that there was free champagne for all, so we headed over there to refresh ourselves further by 1. Drinking champagne and 2. By doing Champagne Overhead, which is a festive version of Anders' classic party favorite, Beer Overhead. It was a great party and something we will remember for sure. Afterwards, we wanted to take pictures with Dio, but Daniel was the only one who dared to knock on Ronnie's dressing room door. Someone opened and asked Dio if he was up for a picture. I guess he was very tired, but he came out, talked a little to Daniel and had a picture with him. Seemed to be such a friendly person. I'm glad we could be at his party, even though I never spoke to him. He was one of my biggest heroes when I started listening to music as a kid and remained one of my favorite singers from that era. Me and my girlfriend were expecting our second child in late February. So doing a show in Italy the 24th would be risky, I knew that. But instead of cancelling, I asked Robin from Oktobertide and Amaran to fill my place this one time. He was more than happy to help out, so we arranged a couple of rehearsals where I sat beside him as a compass. It was a headline show and some 18 songs were on the set list, but he did a great job. They even performed the song Follower for the first time, without me. Bastards. The rest of the year consisted of only festivals. In Spain we performed in a bullfighting arena with Saxon as headline act. Jonas got to meet Biff and get an autograph, get hammered and fall into a building fence and at the same time making sure it collapsed. We flew home early next morning to play another boat festival. Opeth was there too so we decided to do the song Murder with Mike on guest vocals. 
It was very stormy when we were on stage. Mr. Per Vomitizer Eriksson, who was still guitar tech at the time, lasted about halfway into our set before running up to his cabin, puking his guts out before passing out. Hellfest in France is one of our favorite festivals to play. Very professionally arranged and loads of fantastic bands and friends to watch and hang out with. We had an early slot with the sun shining in our faces, but it didn't matter. The crowd was massive and loud and that's what matters. An interesting incident occurred on the six hour limousine ride from Kupio Rock Finland taking us back to the airport. The fact that we had a limo with a private driver taking us back instead of a cigarette smoking flounder face driving a shitty van is interesting itself. I was sitting next to one hungover sodomizer who was trying to sleep and in the same time suppress vomit. He did a great job and lasted 5 hours and 55 minutes before filling two 50 centiliter cups. And as we rolled into the airport, people outside of the limo were taking out their cameras and cell phones. Well, they probably thought we were real celebrities. But as Vomitizer got out of the car with two full cups of barf, trying to throw them into a dumpster only to pour one half of a cup onto himself, the camera people went wondering about their own business again. <laughs> 